Here we've got a classic 68 Mustang that I'm going to be laying down some beautiful Ford Tuxedo Black on. For the base coat on this thing, we're going to be using our in-house Lesson All solvent, which is excellent if I do say so myself. I can't sleep. I can't sleep. I can't sleep. Starting things off right, we're laying down some black Lesson All solvent sealer on this. Um, this is the Primer Pro variety, mixed up to a very nice consistency for sealer, which is a three to one to one mix. Uh, I'm spraying it down with the SADA 1500B Sol. This is a super versatile HVLP gun, which I like to run the sealer through uh, with a 1.4 fluid tip. It is being sprayed over a tediously body worked and sanded to perfection layer of Lesson All Primer Pro, which is a urethane primer surfacer and sealer. So same material, different mix ratio, different activators for the two different ways of doing it. I got a little bit of fuzz in the sealer there. And luckily I've got these dentist tools is what I call them, but they come with a gun cleaning kit. Um, they're good at lifting little bits of stuff out of the paint. I just do one coat of sealer. You could double it up if you really needed to, but since it's over a urethane primer, that's pretty non-porous. Um, it's good to go. If it was over poly, directly over poly, I'd probably run two coats of sealer just to be safe. After letting the base coat flash off for about an hour, it is time to nib sand out the tiny little bits of dust and little things that come about in a paint job. So I like to take this sandpaper and just hold it flat in the palm of your hand. Um, on one hand, I usually use my right hand and then the left hand, I'll have the sanding paper in. So, or vice versa, it doesn't really matter, whichever is your dominant hand. Um, so use one hand to feel the base coat and you'll feel it um, if there's like a piece of dust or lint, um, you'll kind of feel a little bit of a high spot. It'll kind of snag the glove on your hand. You don't want to actually go through the base coat. Really, you're just trying to remove the high spot off of the nib um, so that the next coat of base coat covers it smoothly. That's the real objective here. This car got three nice layers of base coat to get perfect coverage over the entire body.
you ride along out to the clear coat section, I'm spraying today with my SADA 5000 RP. This gun features a 1.3 fluid tip, and I have it set at 29 PSI for perfect clear coat application. My clear coat of choice is Sicken Superior 250. Now, this is a very slow clear, which is excellent for overall refinishing. I'm using the slow variant of this clear coat, which has an extremely slow cure time. So in our booth, which is heated between 75 and 80 degrees, it's about an hour for dust free um, with an overnight dry time, even if you bake it at 140 degrees for half an hour, which I usually do, still let it sit overnight. It's pretty slow. Um, that being said, according to the paint rep at AXO, this is the most scratch resistant, hardest drying clear coat that they offer, which is excellent for a dark color like this, especially on a classic car where at a show you may dust it off or something along those lines and you don't want to get the little, tiny little micro swirls in the clear coat, um, which is what a lot of cheap clear coats exhibit with their softer finish. This is one of those clears that you put down a fairly dry first coat just to like, give it a mostly closed coat. And then you don't necessarily have to wait for it to fully tack up before you put the second coat right on top of it. You're laying down the second coat of clear coat uh, with the same settings on the gun. So same SADA 5000 with a 1.3 tip and set at 29 PSI. Um, and then let it sit. Don't touch it. It might look a little bit dry, but it does flow out, especially when you put some heat to it. Um, and yeah, put it through the bake cycle and then come back in and inspect your work and hope you didn't get too many runs. <laughs> Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.